Good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome. I'm Professor Victoria Jaffe, Dean of Integrated Health and Care Partnerships here at the University. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the Mayor and Mayoress of Colchester, Councillor John Jowers and Mrs. Susan Jowers, all colleagues from LEPRA, our University of Essex students and colleagues, and our university guests. I am so thrilled to welcome you all to the University of Essex and to this very special event this evening. Welcome too to those of you who are joining us online via YouTube. This event tonight is very special in that it is truly global, with the majority, in fact, of our attendees this evening joining us online from across the world. I am told as far away as Australia, India, and Africa. Hello to you all. This week, we celebrate International Women's Day, and this year's theme is Inspire Inclusion. When we inspire others to understand and value women's inclusion, we without a doubt forge a better world for us all. And this evening, we hope that by sharing stories from women affected by leprosy and from those involved in research and treatment, that you will be inspired to understand more about this very neglected disease. We are delighted to be hosting tonight's event, which is part of Lepra's centenary year and the University of Essex's 60th anniversary celebrations. Our partnership with LEPRA enables us to collaborate on projects and academic research where we share common interests and to advance the fields of public and global health. Through this partnership, LEPRA and the University of Essex plan to explore and create innovative joint projects which will have a long-lasting impact for people affected by leprosy. Some examples of our collaboration include colleagues in our School of Health and Social Care who have been working with LEPRA since our online launch, meeting with the World Health Organization, setting up an extension project on One Health approach and neglected tropical diseases for our MSC Global Public Health Program and the subsequent discussions that then led to a project focused on mental health, human rights and neglected tropical diseases for which Judith Bono de Mesquita and Professor Anuj Kapilashrami secured a PhD studentship which was awarded to Cameron Coley, who will actually join us, I'm happy to say, as part of the panel later this evening. Within our Institute of Public Health and Wellbeing, our Deputy Director, Professor Robert Storsky, participated and presented to the World Health Organization Neglected Tropical Diseases Modeling Consortium Meeting in Geneva in 2022. And with LEPRA through Middlesex University, we were able to fund two MRES students to work on wastewater monitoring. So there's lots to showcase and lots to be proud of. And tonight we are showcasing how resilience is helping women win the battle with leprosy. We are delighted to welcome some truly inspirational women 
who will give short presentations highlighting the very valuable work they are involved with in the fight against leprosy. And I know Suzanne will say a little more about the program shortly. So I'm not going to talk anymore, but it gives me great pleasure to now invite Suzanne McCarthy, the Chair of Trustees at LEPRA, to say a little bit more about LEPRA and our event this evening. Suzanne. so I don't know if I need to put this around my neck um, but if you can't hear me raise your hand in the uh, cheap seats the back row and I will do my best to speak even louder from the diaphragm um, Victoria thank you very much I'm afraid some of the things you said I'm going to repeat but if they're so good they're like New York New York worth a second a second statement and it is a real honor for me to be up here at this event and to welcome you uh, on behalf of LEPRA UK and the live streaming uh, that is going on. Welcome everyone globally. Um, as you've heard, this is one of the events to mark International Women's Day and we're placing the spotlight specifically on women who are affected by neglected tropical diseases. And we're very grateful at LEPRA, can I tell you, to the University of Essex for hosting this important event, and to the university events team, who I've met some of them today, uh, for their assistance and expertise in working with us to get this so well organized. And like you, Victoria, I'd like to thank the mayor and mayoress of Colchester. Um, LEPRA is one of the mayor's charities this year, and we are incredibly grateful for that partnership. Leopard's partnership with this university started in February 2021 when we signed a Memorandum of Understanding. And we are delighted to work with them on this joint event, the first one of its kind, and hopefully there will be many, many more. Now I know how to find the STEM building, that is. <laughs> when I joined the Leper Board in 2020, I knew very little about leprosy and the complex and profound individual and societal uh, issues surrounding them. What I learned was that these diseases are not that of the past. They are not biblical. They happen now and they happen to people. They happen to women like women in this room today. Over three million people live with leprosy, causing them to suffer damage to their health, their livelihoods, and their families. Those suffering are often poor. They are marginalized, and women in particular are adversely affected. Leper UK works in India, and it works in Bangladesh to raise awareness, to prevent treat, um, disease, and to treat and follow up patients, as well as strengthening health systems and assisting governments in their leprosy management programs. On the positive side, and this is something you always have to carry with you when you're involved with lepra, is that leprosy is totally curable. And if caught early, the free and simple treatments, they change lives. The, as you've heard, this is Lepra's 100 year. We haven't had a uh, telegram from the king, but it is our 100th year, and we are celebrating in great style our centenary. And this is one of the events that we have been holding this year to celebrate 100 years. I have to tell you, we do not want to be around 100 years from now. We want not to be needed, but we are needed today and right now. And throughout its history, Lepra has been in the forefront of innovation, whether it's new cures and treatments or ensuring the people affected by leprosy are fully involved in all aspects of our work. 
Now, we do have an exciting program for you this evening. We're going to start after me with uh, the Emeritus Professor Diane Lockwood. Diane is an internationally renowned academic. I'll probably cause her to blush now, but I'm going to say something about her because during her long and distinguished career, she led global leprosy research team at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. She's going to speak about the new phases for leprosy project that she and Tom Bradley, a photographer, have been very much involved and led. And some of the photos from the project are on display in the center this evening. You're then going to hear from Maria and Malmita, who are leprous program managers for India and Bangladesh, respectively. And they're going to speak about the clinical role of women in the control of neglected tropical diseases. And we're also then going to hear from Manik Yama in India and Maksuda in Bangladesh, not just about their own lived experience of leprosy, but also who they are as women who are leaders. And we'll finish with a Q&A panel discussion. And taking part in this will be Cameron Coley, a researcher from Bangladesh, who was awarded a Human Rights um, Center scholarship and is working in partnership with LEPRA, uh, Sampa Baskin, uh, a member of LEPRA's board, Judith Bueno de Mesquita from the Essex Law School and co-deputy director of the Human Rights Center at the university, and last but not least, and the only man, but we'll make you an honorary woman tonight, is Jimmy Inns, Leprous CEO. So think about your questions online or in the audience. We'll take as many as we can. And I hope you all have an engaging evening. And now, Diana, the microphone is yours. to be here this, uh, this evening um, and I'm uh, delighted to be a part of this uh, uh, International Women's Day event um, and what I want to do is I want to talk about my journey in leprosy, um, how I became interested in leprosy, uh, the people uh, who mentored uh, and supported me and uh, why I think that leprosy is still an inter interesting uh, a disease uh, uh, to work on and how we still need to be uh, working on the, 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 uh, the different challenges. People often ask, you know, how did I become interested in leprosy? Well, I had a gap year as a student. Uh, I grew up in Worcestershire and I had a place in medical school but I uh, <coughs> dropped out and I w went to India, like all kids in the 1970s. And when I was there, I volunteered in a leprosy hospital. Um, and I could, uh, I, the, it was a big, old-fashioned leprosy hospital. Um, there were hundreds of patients there, but they were just uh, developing new antibiotics, uh, which made, was going to make leprosy a more treatable disease. And they were also educating uh, the patients to look after their hands and feet so that they got less damage to their, their, to their hands and feet. And I could see that, that leprosy was a very uh, interesting disease. Uh, I also travelled home over land. Um, so I travelled um, uh, uh, from, from India uh, uh, across uh, the, uh, Pakistan, uh, up the Khyber Pass, uh, and then to Afghanistan. Afghanistan was then ruled by the king and was a much nicer place to go. Um, and then, I've, uh, then I'm, uh, I went to uh, Iran, uh, which was uh, ruled by the, the Shah. Uh, and then I, I crossed uh, the t Turkey. And then I came home and I then started my medical stu st uh, studies um, uh, uh, in uh, the uh, Birmingham uh, University. But this had given me the, the bug of being interested in leprosy, um, and it had also fostered my uh, interest uh, in, uh, in travel. 
So what happened was I then I trained in medicine, and then you can say that I, I super specialized in leprosy. Um, and I uh, did a PhD in, the, the, in leprosy, which then actually took me back to India, uh, 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 working on uh, uh, the uh, immunology of, uh, of leprosy and, uh, and nerve damage. Um, and I then uh, was appointed uh, at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases um, uh, as a consultant uh, the, there. And, and I the, the <coughs> also the looked after leprosy patients in the UK. And I ran a, an academic research program at the School of Hygiene and, uh, and Tropical Medicine. Looking after leprosy patients in the UK is very interesting, uh, and I actually saw patients from 83, th sorry, from 33 different countries. Um, that's because uh, there are so many migrants to London, and people then uh, present with their, their, with their, their leprosy there. But what I was interested in doing, I was interested in improving patient outcomes, because uh, this to me is, is the most important part of, uh, of leprosy. Uh, I also had a, uh, a very good mentor, J Joe Colston. Joe Colston was also uh, involved with lepra. He was a, a microbiologist at the National Institute for, uh, the, for Medical Research, um, and he was chairman of the lepra MA Beden. And I was uh, looking for a research project in leprosy, and I went and uh, talked to Joe, uh, and then he arranged for me to uh, go to Hyderabad uh, and to do the, the, my research uh, the, there. So that meant that I, 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 I again, I've uh, been going to, to Hyderabad uh, there since the, the mid-1980s, and I've seen a, a lot of changes in, uh, in, in Hyderabad. Um, uh, there, uh, there's, uh, there's one leprologist in the UK, um, and, uh, the, and, and he then retired in 1994, and I was very lucky because I was then appointed uh, uh, to, that, uh, uh, to that post. Um, uh, uh, and uh, I was the, the, the first woman who was uh, the appointed as a consultant at the, at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases. And uh, Joe was also very involved with the, with the Blue Peter appeal, um, 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 uh, which uh, the was a uh, 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 Christmas appeal raising money that... Um, uh, for, uh, for lepra, um, and that led to the to the establishment of uh, of the Blue, Blue, Blue Peter uh, uh, Research at the Centre. Uh, when I started at the Hospital of Tropical Diseases, as, as I said, um, there uh, uh, I was the the only female uh, consultant. And by the time I left, there were fifty percent uh, the consultants, and, and these uh, uh, these these are my colleagues there. I was also uh, succeeded um, in my post as leprologist by uh, Steve Waters, who's the first black consultant <coughs> at, uh, at HTD. So, so things do improve. Um, so leprosy, there are still many challenges with leprosy. Uh, we still um, uh, have a lot to learn about leprosy. We still don't, don't really know how it's transmitted. Uh, we don't know why some people get leprosy, uh, why other people uh, uh, develop uh, these immune-mediated uh, reactions. The kind of leprosy that a person develops uh, is determined on their own host immune response. And so again, there's a spectrum of, of, uh, of responses. And again, that ma makes diagnosing uh, the disease more difficult. Um, and uh, uh, there's no single diagnostic test for leprosy. Again, that's a, that's a, that's a challenge at the for, cl for clinicians. However, we do have effective antibiotics, uh, and we're very lucky because uh, the we're, we've got this combination of uh, the, of rifampicin, dapsone, and clofazamine, um, and that uh, is a highly bactericidal combination, uh, and uh, patients are treated with uh, two or three antibiotics for either six or twelve months. And we've got very high cure rates, 98%, uh, which is amazing when you, uh, when you think um, uh, uh, of other the, the antibiotic uh, the regimens. Um, and the drugs are provided free by WHO uh, to the national uh, the leprosy programs. However, one of the challenges with leprosy is that there's a lot of inflammation in the skin and the nerves. 
And this continues after people have been treated with their antibiotics. And we know that about 50% of patients with multiple ciliary leprosy uh, will, de will develop uh, reactions and nerve damage and will need uh, treatment uh, with steroids. Um, and when we're giving patients with steroids, that improves uh, the, their, their skin far more than, uh, than that, than their, their nerves. Um, and so uh, what I've done is I've also done uh, studies looking at trying to define second line agents of the, of, uh, of the steroids. So we did a big study to looking at azathioprine. So we did uh, a big uh, randomized controlled trial uh, in a uh, hospital in, uh, in India. Um, and uh, the we gave the, the over 300 the, the, uh, patients uh, uh, azathioprine or, or a placebo. We uh, measured the outcome using a, a combined score. Um, and uh, the, uh, we did uh, an intention uh, to treat analysis. And we found that 30% uh, 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 needed to the steroids. We, we did see there's some improvements, but unfortunately, um, azathioprine treatment did not increase the improvement in, in, in patient outcomes. And this is a, a very important negative study, and it's very important to do and publish negative studies because um, uh, it's only by uh, 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 doing negative studies that we can pre prevent unnecessary antibiotics from, uh, the freeing, from being used. Um, and I've also had the, uh, uh, worked with uh, many different people at the, the, uh, the leprosy group um, um, at the London School. Um, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 Steve Walker uh, and uh, uh, here's uh, uh, Sharon Marlowe who worked with me um, and Anima John worked on the, the, on the studies uh, the in India. And then uh, Sava uh, uh, is an Ethiopian who came and worked with me also and she's now continuing doing leprosy work and she's at the, again at the part of the, of the London School. Uh, uh, project. One of the important things in leprosy is to try and prevent uh, neuropathy and you, you do that by educating uh, uh, patients to look after their hands and feet um, and you know uh, to get them to prevent uh, um, them injuring themselves uh, so they need to do uh, muscle exercises to strengthen themselves and footwear for uh, protecting anesthetic feet is very important. Um, and uh, Lepra has been a leader in uh, providing footwear. What's important is to give people encouragement and hope. Um, and uh, we've also set up the New Face for Leprosy <coughs> project. So one of the things that happens when you go on the <coughs> net is that you see uh, a lot of negative images that, uh, uh, for people. And so I've worked with a, a photographer, the Tom Bradley, who's here in the audience. Um, and uh, uh, we've uh, the, uh, photographed patients, you know, in India and in Bangladesh, um, and we've uh, set up uh, the, uh, this website, uh, and the, uh, also the, the pictures uh, that there are uh, outside. Um, I've also had very good Indian colleagues, you know, uh, particularly at, uh, at the Blue Peter Research Centre, and uh, this was. Uh, a partner who was uh, visiting at the, uh, at the London School. Uh, fortunately, she, she, she visited actually the same uh, day as, as the man from the, uh, um, the, the who was running uh, uh, the Global Leprosy Research Program. So uh, that's, uh, that, that, that was nice. And Sujai Sunita is another Indian colleague. Again, I've worked with him for a long time. This is uh, the, the photograph at the, uh, uh, from about uh, uh, 10 years ago from him uh, again giving uh, hope to patients. And uh, another important person was uh, Indira Nath. And Indira Nath was an Indian uh, pathologist. She again uh, was involved with Lepra uh, and uh, the, uh, Lepra uh, supported uh, her work and uh, she uh, worked on the immunology of, uh, 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 of uh, the leprosy looking at uh, the drivers of, uh, the, of inflammation uh, and uh, she looked at the roles of the different uh, T and B cells uh, there in, uh, uh, um, in leprosy um, and she uh, 
uh, was associated uh, with lepra and uh, leprosy view uh, uh, all her life. And she was the, the director of the Blue Peter the, the Research Centre uh, 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 in the mid to uh, the mid 200s, and, and unfortunately, she did, uh, died uh, that last year. And I've also been involved in um, uh, global studies, to to uh, looking at uh, uh, one of the other uh, immune reactions. So this is uh, erythema nodosum leprosum uh, and uh, ne neuropathic pain. And we've set up a global consortium uh, linking uh, the uh, leprosy the research centres in uh, eight countries. Um, uh, and uh, uh, we again, we've got a severity scale for the uh, for measuring uh, uh, ENL and, and ENL the, the severity. Um, and we've also looked at the economic burden because one of the problems is that uh, the ENL reactions are experienced uh, but mainly by young people um, who are economically active and uh, they uh, take a, the, a financial hit when they uh, are not able uh, uh, to do their, their work. I've also looked at neuropathic pain because, again, one of the things that you learn from patients is that a lot of them, although they're cured of their infections, they have uh, these neuropathic pains, which are the uh, stinging and, and burning pains. And it's really it's a, an under-recognised problem, uh, but, but now is having uh, the, the more the, the recognition. And we also worked on the HIV and leprosy because uh, the beginning of the HIV epidemic, we thought that, uh, that uh, uh, HIV would, uh, uh, would have a, the, an unfortunate effect on uh, uh, leprosy and increase uh, leprosy numbers. Unfortunately, it didn't, uh, and we've been, we've been very uh, lucky there. Um, and this is uh, the, the, the enlisted uh, consortium, uh, you know, uh, linking together you know, uh, academic centres you know, in, uh, uh, in Brazil, Ethiopia, um, uh, 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 India the, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the Philippines. And uh, the, uh, this is a the picture of, from, of one of the uh, enlist meetings um, and uh, the, uh, uh, and Joy Deepa Dalong is there. She's also done a lot of work as a, an active researcher in, uh, uh, in leprosy and uh, uh, is now involved in our uh, latest uh, studies. And Leprosy Review is another important uh, publication uh, that's been uh, supported by, by LEPRA um, and uh, an important contribution uh, of, uh, of LEPRA. And I was editor uh, from uh, 1997 uh, to 2014. Again, it's very important to, uh, to have the, these, these journals. Um, uh, Irene Allen um, from LEPRA uh, was, uh, was part of that. And I was also very lucky uh, um, to be involved with uh, Victoria Hislop because uh, Victoria Hislop uh, needed uh, some medical advice when she was planning her book about leprosy. So she wrote a book about uh, the leprosy uh, uh, called uh, the, the Island, um, and this uh, featured um, uh, a, a Greek leprosy colony um, uh, 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 that, uh, that changed. And she, so she came to me and asked about leprosy, and, uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, I advised her, and that was great fun because, you know, it was... Uh, uh, interesting to see the book uh, when she wrote it. And what happened was that the, the book didn't do that well in hardback, but when it came out in paperback, it was then uh, picked up by Richard and Judy as a summer read, uh, and then it just took off. Um, and she then was awarded uh, uh, the Newcomer of the Year uh, uh, Award. Uh, and uh, this book has now been translated uh, uh, into 35 different languages. Um, you know, and has got it again. Has got a huge reach and uh, is helping uh, to, to reduce uh, the stigma. Uh, and uh, Victoria is also uh, an ambassador for, for Lepra. Uh, and you know, what I'd like to say is that I've had uh, a hugely enjoyable journey uh, working with this challenging disease, and you know that there's still there are still many things to do, many problems uh, to solve. 
um, and that I, I hope that women will be encouraged to come and work uh, in, uh, in STEM um, and in this uh, project. Um, and, you know, I've worked with many people. I've been part of many teams, uh, and, and that has just been so enjoyable at the, uh, doing that. Um, and I, what's now ni nice is that I see my, my protégé is now in, uh, uh, in many places. So, so the <coughs> last, uh, last week, one of my Sri Lankan protégés gave a, a major lecture in, uh, uh, in Sri Lanka about uh, leprosy uh, and so the so the, the yes, so I've got I've got a network of women across the world, um, and I'm still keen on travelling, and I'm still keen on cycling, and uh, I went uh, cycling in Mongolia for my holiday last year. Uh, so the so you you can have a lot of fun uh, uh, on the way of doing all these things. Welcome to our presentation today. I am Momita. I'm working as a program manager for India at Libra. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here in the run-up for International Women's Day. My name is Maria and I'm the program manager for Bangladesh at Lepra UK. So the today's topic that we are going to discuss is the critical role of women in the control of neglected tropical d diseases, NTDs. And today what we are going to discuss basically is what are the issues there are that women faces and women in NTD, those are affected by entities they faces and what are the solutions because Maria and I both come from program uh, side so we will bring our perspective and we'll be providing you with some examples of solutions so gender and entities is this working gender and entities what are the issues? Why do we need to take, talk about women in neglected tropical diseases? So women are more vulnerable. Just next. So what we found that women are more uh, impacted and vulnerable to NTDs, and and yeah, both men and women are, are affected by NTDs, but women are affected more long term, more impacted more long term and also they're more vulnerable and this is for a, a series of reasons. The first one would be that uh, the gender roles and responsibilities. Women in a lot of the communities that we work in are responsible for collecting water, for cooking, for looking after animals which in, uh, increases their risk of exposure to neglected tropical diseases. And Marie, as Maria raised this point that gender roles and responsibilities in terms of women, they are very limited and uh, that's why they are also limited to uh, many different, getting many different resources like financial resources or be it accessing healthcare or preventive measures. So all those front, they are lagging behind. That's why the socioeconomic and educational factors comes in play when uh, it, we are trying to uh, you know, build a better world for women and why they are lagging behind compared to men. And Mamita, you mentioned the difficulty in access. This is very important for women. We know that neglected tropical diseases and poverty is a vicious cycle. So you can imagine for certain men, it, it might be very costly to get to a primary health care centre. In communities where it's not acceptable for women to move out of the household alone, this would mean that they have to pay double fare for the woman and their accompaniment. So that's an, an additional barrier that women face to be able to access health services. Thank you for raising those uh, points, Maria, here. And um, next point is like they are very susceptible to discrimination and isolation. I'll give you one example from one of our project, uh, Samarth project, where we found out that women suffer more uh, 
when it is comes related to social consequences of NTDs, uh, be it stigma, discrimination, and abandonment. We saw adolescent girls who were affected by uh, leprosy and other kind of diseases that also they are with disabilities. What happens is family often considers them as their burden because they can't marry them off. So these sort of social and in the patriarchal structure where Maria and I work in Bangladesh in India, these issues for women exacerbated. It's even more than compared to men. Then there's the double burden of an NTD. And this illustrates the scenario when the husband gets co contracts the neglected tropical disease. This, how does this impact the woman? So sometimes the woman has to stop working and becomes the uh, primary um, caretaker of their husband. It could mean also if the husband, in the case of lymphatic filariasis, there's a complication called hydrocele, which is the inflammation of the testicles. You can imagine this creates um, uh, sexual health problems within the marriage. And also sometimes women have to become the breadwinners suddenly when the husband can no longer work. So this is how uh, neglect tropical diseases are a double burden for women. And as Maria was also talking about how it is double burdening on women, uh, we often understand also women's, often there are issues that other women understand, but then they are also when it comes to workforce, in leprosy and neglected tropical disease, they are minority, women are minority in workforce. And they're far often excluded from decision making on policy formulation or policy implementation process. So we need to be, that's one of the things that we felt that women are missing, women's voices are missing when it comes to workforce, working for women, and um, in, in general, decision making process. I think we both agree on this point, Momita, that the NTD world, and in particular the leprosy world, is a very male-dominated world. In my case, as a project manager for Bangladesh, I work with 31 colleagues overseas. Four out of 31 are women, and one is in a leadership position. That's 13% of the workforce. And that, that's not only in Bangladesh, that's across the countries that we work in. So then, in gender and NTDs, now that we are talking about all these issues, what are the solutions? So next point, that's what we are going to discuss. What are the solutions we think? So the first thing we need to do is realize women's rights. This is a prerequisite in order to achieve full gender equality. Without rights, we cannot go to the next step. And um, for recently, we have been conducting series of consultations with people affected in Bangladesh and India. One of the things as a suggestion that came up is a gender lens uh, when addressing NTD specific issues. I know we all talk about gender equality, but equity, but the areas we work with, women are so behind. If we don't analyze projects and uh, different policies with the gender lens, women's voices are not being heard, women's issues are not being presented. So a gender lens is important when we are talking about socioeconomic inequity or other things that hinders their performance. And that will also uh, ensure the successful delivery of entity programs. We need to co-design, which doesn't mean just include some women's voices. It means peer-to-peer, co-design with women, inclusive and equitable uh, programs that prioritize women and girls. We also have to ensure access to uh, resources. Maria is talking about co-delivery or coexisting, but then also there are so many resources that's not available for women, be it education, be it financial, time constraint. Most women that we are talking about, they're housewives. So they are so busy. When do they have time for literacy, for health seeking behavior, improving their attitude about health, taking preventive measures. So ensuring access to resources will enable them, will open so many pathways for them for empowerment and uh, building their autonomy. Uh, the fourth point is to plan for gender desegregated data collection. And this is important because we need to understand where women are missing out. How many male beneficiaries, male people are we reaching? How many women? Why are the women not interested in our services? We need to keep on collecting data and split it between male and female so that we can know what the issues are and then uh, design tailored solutions to these issues. 
Uh, now that when we are collecting the data, then we also have to guarantee that representation and participation of women in decision making process, in policy formulation and implementation, which we detected as an issue in our previous slides, but now we are talking about we have to ensure, we have to make sure they are at all level, at all systems, their voices are being heard, they are included, be it the community level, be it at the national level, district level, or any uh, or international level. So that guarantee, it's also that uh, accountability falls under us that that representation needs to be guaranteed. And to be able to combat NTDs, we really need to invest in female healthcare workers. Females are natural caregivers. Females are educators within the communities. We need to use females to be able to uh, combat NTDs. Without them, we will not succeed in beating leprosy or any other NTDs. So that's an interesting point you said, Maria, about investing in female worker. So I would, I'm interested to know, how are we going to invest in female health work, care worker? Do you have any real life examples that to share with all of us? So perfect timing for this question, because now we're going into the real life examples in our programming. So the first example of investing in female care workers is uh, investing in ASHAs. ASHAs are accredited social health activists in India. And the idea why ASHAs were created was to connect the mar marginalized communities with the public health uh, service in India. So you can see the photo on the left. This lady in the center is an ASHA. She's part of one of our screening teams. These uh, three people go house to house screening the skin of uh, men and women and children who are in the houses to try and uh, prevent, catch the early signs of leprosy. And you can imagine if, like in the photo of in, in the, on the right hand side, this is a village with, um, with women who come out to see who are these health workers. And you can see it's all male health workers in, this, in the image on the, on the right hand side. Um, this is really not the best way to capture the hearts and imagination of women. Women will not feel comfortable expressing their concerns or being screened by a group of men. This is why we need women screening, raising awareness in the communities. It's culturally appropriate and it's the way forward. So an ASHA is an example of how we invest in female healthcare workers. Asha is basically an uh, accredited social health activist that works in India. Um, of course, Asha's are of course an inclusive way to go ahead to... Yeah. My question now, I have a question for you. Okay. So could you give me an example in our programming of how we can ensure access to resources? Of course, Maria. Uh, ensure access to resources. I know pre previously I was talking about all kinds of resources, financial, um, education and other kind of resources. But now I will give you a very unique example here. Um, so uh, at Lipra, we do think about our people affected their long-term health. So, and we believe that mental health is a, it's very important and very core to our work. People with disability seems to develop depression, uh, other kind of anxiety and very, um, very critical mental health issues. So here, ensuring access to resources in mental well-being is very, very important. But then again, will I go up to anybody and share my mental health problems? Of course not. So for example, uh, if a female is facing disability, a long-term disability, and has mental health issues, there will be a friend-like person, a f another female person in a patriarchal setting, they will feel much more comfortable to share their problem with after few sessions of consultation, they will start opening up. That's why our in Bangladesh, we have mental motivators. In India, we have uh, peer supporters where they talk like a friend, talk like somebody next door who cares about you and then opens up and that uh, also, uh, after that, we provide series of counseling, training required, and that's how we are ensuring access to resources. So there was one part we were talking about, a very critical thing that guaranteeing their participation and representation. It sounds also sounds so beautiful, but how are we going to do that, Maria? 
So here's a real life example of our program in Bangladesh. This group of people are the Bogura Federation. The ladies who are sitting down are all representatives um, of 1,100 1, people affected by leprosy and other disabilities. These uh, people are elected to represent people with disability. They're trained uh, on uh, leadership, on group management, on financial management, and they can now signpost and uh, uh, access disability allowance and also become like political uh, representatives of people affected in their district. This lady in green uh, sitting on the sitting on the closest to, to me now, she's, she's a force of nature. She is uh, committed to also in the screening of people affected. She teaches the communities of what the signs and symptoms of leprosy are and she uh, wants to find every early case of leprosy in her district. So this is an example of how women can be part of federations. This federation, by the way, there's an equal representation of men and women. So this is a good example that we would like to see spread across all of our programming. And there I can vouch for Maria because I had a consultation with Taslima girl in a red um, hijab and she is a bold, fierce woman who know how to advocate for individual rights, people with disability talking. I felt she's been born leader, but Lepra, I felt somehow unleashed that leadership that was hidden inside her to talk about her rights and advocacy. So that's an example, a wonderful example that I personally can relate to Maria. Thank you. And finally, we talked about co-designing programs. What do we mean by co-designing? Can you give me an example? So something strange happened this time when we recently, just last month, we all entire programs team went to India and we visited a few um, self-support group in Bihar. So we had our consultation where everybody were talking, but right after we had this consultation, most women was coming up to us and they said, they were very grateful that they received customized footwear. But these sandals are, doesn't look like female sandals. Oh, man's chappal, man footwear. And they were not quite happy with that sandals. I'm like, what do you want? What do you want? It should be very, very colorful, pretty, so that I can wear them in weddings. I can go wherever I want. And that sort of attractive one. And what we realized, because it came up in every support group we went to, and everybody, though they are not related, they are far apart, geographically located, not different, diversely located, they were all talking about man's footwear, not for, made for female. So we thought that their is a lack, what their opinion was missing, their voices was not there when we were designing the footwear. There, of course, those specialized footwear were needed, but it has to be from the very, very beginning there voices need to be heard. So we are trying now taking a different approach in kind of including them from the beginning of this process of footwear, understanding footwear, designing footwear from colors to color palette to everything else, design everything else, yeah. So we're just wrapping up. Here are the takeaway messages of today's session. Women are more vulnerable and are more impacted in the long term by NTDs, but women are also critical in the battle against NTDs. And we need equal access to resources, financial, social security, education and, and healthcare. And we have to ensure representation of women at all level, at all system. Without women, we're not going to succeed in any global challenges, peace, climate change, but also in our area of beating NTDs. We're not going to achieve the SD, um, sustainable development goals or achieve any of the milestones in the NTD roadmap. We have to have women involved in all the processes. And we, here we are women in Lipra. And I'm so, so proud to say we are all women, 100% women in the programs team at Lipra UK. And they are all our colleagues from India, from Bangladesh. As you can see the colors, we are all proudly representing Lipra and we believe that change begins with us. And here we thank all of you for being here today. And here we have our email addresses. If you have any questions, 
comments for us, please do let us know. And if you have an innovative idea, please don't hold them back. Email us and let us know how we can be more inclusive in our programs. Thank you. Thank you so much. प्रथम रियक्शन करते दुर्वहार कर गोद्रकेशन <laughs> शुशुशाशु दर्घटन कर मैडम ग्रामीण 
to be uh, on their own and uh, to how to be uh, good and she do a lot of counseling with them mental counseling so that they can feel good and they can uh, stay healthy and uh, wise thank you maksuda bhalo uh, thako নিশ্চয়ই আমাদেরকে তুমি আরও সাহায্য করো আমাদের মতন গ্রুপকে তোমার সাহায্যের তোমার অ্যাডভাইসের অনেক দরকার আছে সো তুমি ভালো থাকো সুস্থ থাকো থ্যাংক ইউ আপনাদের সি বিইং আ মেম্বার অফ আওয়ার ফাউন্ডেশন বগুড়া ফাউন্ডেশন অ্যান্ড সেলফ হেল্প গ্রুপ শি ওয়েন্ট টু ইন্ডিয়া অ্যান্ড অ্যাটেন্ড দি আইএল আইএল টি ILC meeting uh, where she gave her speech in Sasakawa uh, the uh, global meeting in arranged by Sasakawa and she also went to Manila uh, also to attend the ILC there and uh, in during the global meeting uh, arranged by Sasakawa there also she gave her speech uh, how she is uh, from the beginning till now her life journey Thank you. Hi, Manikya Ma. Can you please introduce yourself to us? Hi, Madam. My name is Manikya Ma. I'm a lab attendant. I'm a lab attendant. I'm a small host. I'm a clean host. I'm a clean host. I'm a patient. 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 ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ <laughs> మాకు లెప్రసీ అంటే లెప్రసీ గురించి తెలుసు అంటే మా మదర్ లెప్రస్ పేషెంట్ ప్లస్ మా నాన్న లెప్రస్ పేషెంట్ మా హస్బెండ్ కూడా లెప్రస్ పేషెంట్ అయితే తెలుసు కాకపోతే నాకు టూ థౌజండ్లో కొంచెం ఇక్కడ ప్యాచెస్ లాగా వచ్చింది వస్తే నేను అట్లా అంటే ఏంటి అందరికి అంటే మా ఇంట్లో ఫ్యామిలీ ఉన్నది కాబట్టి నాకు వచ్చిందా అనేది ఒకటి అట్లా నాకు భయం వేసింది మళ్ళీ తర్వాత ఏం కాదు నేను అట్లా చేస్తానే కదా అందరు కూడా ఉన్నారు కదా ఏం పని ఉన్నాయని ధైర్యం తెచ్చుకుని నేను ఇక్కడ చూపించుకున్నాను అప్పుడు టూ థౌజండ్ లో ఉన్న డాక్టర్ గారికి అప్పుడు నాకు రాంగ్ టాబ్లెట్ అని ఉండదు సింగల్ డోస్ అది ఇచ్చారు అది వేసుకున్నాను నాకు అప్పుడు వచ్చింది కానీ ధైర్యంతో ఏం కాదు అనే ఒక ధైర్యంతో అప్పట్లో చాలా అంటే నేను పుట్టక ముందుకు వాళ్ళ గారి వచ్చినప్పుడు ఊర్లలో చాలా వ్యతిరేకంగా చేసేవారు అంటే వాళ్ళ పేరెంట్స్ అంతా మాకు ఇట్లా ఉన్నది అంటే మా మమ్మీ మా మాదర్ మా అప్ప ఊర్లో నుంచి వచ్చేసేది అంటే అందరు వేరుగా చూస్తున్నారు ఈ లిప్రస్ ఉంది మనం దూరంగా పెట్టాలి దూరంగా అన్నం పెట్టాలి అట్లా అంటే ఇవన్నీ ఎందుకు భరించాలి అన్నట్టు ఇద్దరు వాళ్ళు అక్కడికి వెళ్ళి వచ్చేసి ఇక్కడ తెలిసిన వాళ్ళు ఇట్లా ఉండి అట్లా వాళ్ళు అట్లా జీవితం పడుతుంది అండి ఆ తర్వాత మళ్ళీ ఊరికి కూడా వెళ్ళలేదండి అస్సలు అంటే వాళ్ళు వ్యతిరేకంగా చేస్తారు కదా మళ్ళీ వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి ఎందుకు వెళ్ళటం అని లేదు చాలా రోజుల తర్వాత మా ఫాదర్ వాళ్ళ రిలేషన్స్ ఏం కాదు అనుకుని పరిస్థితి అంటే నేను లెప్రసీ అని కాదు నా జీవితాన్ని చాలా కష్టంగా అనుభవించింది ఎందుకంటే అమ్మ వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు తర్వాత నాకు పేషెంట్ కి మ్యారేజ్ చేసారు మ్యారేజ్ చేసిన తర్వాత కూడా చాలా బాధలు పడ్డ కష్టం అంటే పిల్లలు అయ్యింది ఆ తర్వాత చాలా బాధపడ్డాను అమ్మ నాన్న చనిపోయింది ఆ తర్వాత ఈయన కూడా ఇప్పుడు నైట్ సిక్స్ లో చనిపోయింది ఆ తర్వాత కూడా పిల్లలు చిన్నగా ఉన్నారు అంటే చాలా కష్టపడి వాళ్ళని తెలుసుకుంటే ఇంతవరకు తీసుకొచ్చిన పిల్లలు అందరినీ చదివించిన పిల్లల్ని తెలుసుకుంటా వచ్చిన చిన్న అమ్మాయి స్టాఫ్ నర్స్ తీసుకొచ్చిన ఎప్పుడు అంటే అంతకుముందు తెలియదు అంటే లెక్క నేను వేరే ఒక సార్ పరిచయం కదా అంటే మా మామూలుగా పని చేసుకునేదాన్ని వేరే దగ్గర ఇట్లా కూలి పనులు అట్లా ఏ పని చెప్తే పని చేసుకునేటప్పుడు ఒక సార్ పరిచయం లేదు ఆ సార్ ద్వారా నేను అక్కడ జాబ్లో జాయిన్ చేశారు అక్కడ నుంచి అప్పుడు విక్టోరియా హాస్పిటల్ సంబంధించి ఉన్నారు అని అక్కడ జాయిన్ చేసిన తర్వాత అప్పుడు లెక్క మళ్ళీ 
నా లెక్క నైంటీ సెవెన్ లో తీసుకున్నాను అప్పటికి నేను అందులో ఉన్నాను అప్పటి నుంచి లెక్క నాకు పరిచయం పెట్టాలనే చేస్తున్నాను లెక్క జాబ్ చేయటానని నేను నా పిల్లలను చదివించుకున్నాను వాళ్ళ మ్యారేజ్ కూడా చేశాను లెక్క నాకు చాలా సపోర్ట్ చేసింది ఇప్పటి వరకు కూడా చాలా సపోర్టింగ్గా ఉన్నది అన్ని విధాలుగా కూడా నాకు చాలా చాలా హెల్పింగ్గా చెప్తారు సజెషన్ ఇస్తారు వాళ్ళ ద్వారా నేను చాలా అంటే మహిళలకు పురుషులకు పెళ్ళకు వస్తుంది పురుషులకి ఎక్కువ అనిపిస్తుంది కాకపోతే పెళ్లి కానీ వాళ్ళ చిన్నపిల్లలకు అంతైతే లేదు పెద్ద వాళ్ళకే ఉన్నది ఇక వాళ్ళ ఫ్యామిలీ అట్లా సరిపోతున్నారు అని లెప్రెసీ మెయిన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ గా చూస్తారు లెప్రెసీ ఏంటంటే ఆడవాళ్ళకి వచ్చింది పెళ్లి కాలేదంటే వాళ్ళకి భయం ఉంటుంది మాకు పెండ్ అవుతుంది కాదు లెప్రెసీ ఉంటాయి అనేది ఒకటి భయం ఉంటుంది పెండ్ అయిన వాళ్ళు భర్తకు చెప్తే విడిచిపెడతాడో ఏమో తెలియదు మళ్ళీ ఇట్లా ఉన్నదని చెప్తే విడిచిపెట్టే వాళ్ళు కూడా చాలా మంది ఉన్నారు అర్థం చేసుకుంటుంటారు వారి కూడా విడిచిపెట్టే వాళ్ళు చాలా మంది ఉన్నారు తెలిసిన వాళ్ళకు నాకు తెలిసిన ఎవరైనా తెలుస్తాం వాళ్ళకు ఒకటే చెప్తా అనేది ఎవరికి అంటారు చెయ్యరు కానీ మీరు విడిచిపెట్టుకోమని అవన్నీ చేయద్దు వస్తే తక్కువైపోతుంది పెళ్ళిళ్ళు చేసుకోవచ్చు పెళ్లి కానీ వాళ్ళకి వస్తే పిల్లలు అవుతుంది దీని గురించి భయపడాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు జాగ్రత్త ఉండాలా ఈ విడిచిపెట్టుకోవటం బాగుండదు తట్టుకోయేది కానీ అంటుకునేది అయితే కాదనేసి వాళ్ళకి నేను సజెషన్ ఇస్తాను నేను బాధపడ్డాను నాన్నలు మీరు బాధపడద్దు కాకపోతే వాళ్ళు మన జీవితాన్ని జీవితంలో చాలా పరిస్థితులు ఎదుర్కొంటున్నామో ముందుకు సాగుతున్నాం కానీ మీరు కూడా అట్లాగనే పరిస్థితిని అర్థం చేసుకొని మన కష్టాన్ని మనం దాన్ని ముందుకు సాగించుకొని మన కష్టాన్ని మనం దాన్ని అట్లనే నివారించుకొని మంచిగా సాగాల వేరే వాళ్ళ గురించి చాలు వేరే వాళ్ళు చెప్తారు వెళ్ళిపోతారు వేరే వాళ్ళ బలం ఎప్పటికీ కాదు మన ధైర్యంగా మన బలంతో ముందుకు సాగాల మనకు వచ్చిన పరిస్థితులు మనమే ఎదుర్కొంటూ ముందుకు సాగాలి అని నేను వాళ్ళకి సలహా ఇస్తాను ఇప్పుడు భవిష్యత్తు అంటే ఇప్పుడు అట్లా ఏమీ భయం అనేది లేదు చాలా వరకు తగ్గిపోయింది ఇప్పుడు చాలా మంచిగా చూస్తారు ఎవరికన్నా నేను కన్ ఎవరికన్నా చూస్తే కూడా నేను కంపల్సరీ ఇక్కడికి ఉండి ఇక్కడ మంచిగా అవుతారని వాళ్ళకి సా చెప్తాను ఇప్పుడు అంత మంచిగా చూస్తున్నారు అంత భయం అనేది లేదు అంటే మా మదర్కు అట్లా వచ్చిందని వచ్చేసిన తర్వాత ఆమె ధైర్యం తెచ్చుకొని వాళ్ళకి దగ్గర ఎందుకు ఉండాలి మనంతటా మనం బ్రతకొచ్చు కదా నా ధైర్యంతో ఆమె ఎట్లా ఉందో నేను అదే ధైర్యంతో ముందుకు నడుస్తున్నాను పేషెంట్స్ ఎవరైనా వస్తే కూడా వాళ్ళకి ధైర్యం చెప్తాను మన ధైర్యంతో మనం ముందుకు నడవాలా ఎవరి గురించి ఆలోచించవద్దు ఏమి కాదు మనం మంచిగా ఉంటేనే రేపు మనకి ఫ్యూచర్గా ఆలోచిస్తాం కానీ మనం మంచిగా ధైర్యంతో ముందుకు సాగాల ఒకరు ఒకరు మనకు ఎలిమినేటెడ్ చేసేంత వరకు మనం తెచ్చుకోవద్దు మనం జాగ్రత్తగా ఉండి ఒకరికి మనం ధైర్యం ఇవ్వాలి మంచిగా ఉంటుంది ఏం కాదు అనేది ఒక ధైర్యం ఇవ్వాలి అని నేను చెప్తాను ప్రపంచం అంతటా ఉన్న మహిళలకు ప్రతి ఒక్కరికి ప్రపంచం ప్రతి మహిళ అందరికీ మహిళా దినోత్సవ శుభాకాంక్షలు అందరూ మన బలము మన శక్తితో మనం ముందుకు సాగి అందరికీ మనం ధైర్యంగా నిలబడేటట్టు నిలబడాలి మనమే అందరికీ వందరాలి I think the easiest way for us to do that is for each person here to introduce themselves and to just say a few words about how they are involved with lepra or working on leprosy. So if we start with Jimmy, the honorary man. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Jimmy Innes and I'm the CEO of Lepra in the UK. Do you want to say a few words about I'll me? say a few words. <laughs> say a few words, and then we'll take some questions. Okay, great. So, um, see if we have any answers. I, I, there's th I, I think those videos we saw are great. Um, and uh, the woman, Maksuda, who you saw with her cow there in Bangladesh, I met her on my first trip to Bang Bangladesh, visited her in, in, that, in that home where she was recording the video. And she left such an impression on me at that time. And seeing her video again now, I mean, what an amazing woman. Maria earlier talked about another lady as being a force of nature. Maxuda is also a force of nature. 
I was taking notes about what she said just now because I, I was thinking about what to say and then I watched Maxuda on the video and she just inspired me. She talked, the challenges that she talked about in her private life, in her relationship, the emotional impact of her diagnosis, the economic hardship that she faced, the outcast, people wouldn't talk to me, the loneliness that she felt. These, we, we, we hear these challenges all the time from women affected by leprosy in India and Bangladesh. I'm a lucky man. I get to visit our programs in person and meet um, our project staff and visit our project sites in the areas where the communities where we work and meet people like Maksuda. And I've heard so many stories like Maksuda's. The challenges that women affected by leprosy and LF face, they're really hard to explain how profound they are. And then you come across forces of nature like Maksuda, who said, you will find your courage. You will find your way in life. As a woman who's not going to be put down by anyone or anything. And I just think it's a really powerful message that I wanted to, to reinforce. And I wanted to reinforce another powerful woman's message, a powerful young woman. So last week, the week before, it was half term here in Essex. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, Amber, who I hope is watching the live stream right now, um, came to my office. Um, which she loves doing. And I tasked her with doing a poster for this event, International Women's Day. I gave her the theme, gave her some of our, um, our magazines and brochures for her to learn about lepra and leprosy and to make a poster. And she made this poster and I wanted to show it to you. I'll describe it in case you can't see it clearly. And above, there's a heart and a star to the side of her head. And above her it says, International Women's Day 2024. And Amber's message underneath reads, women affected by leprosy are strong women. They have overcome many challenges in their lives. Challenges like the kind that my students telling us about. All I can say as a privileged white male CEO of Lepra is that these challenges are real and they are profound. And the resilience displayed by women affected by leprosy everywhere is unbelievable. And women affected by leprosy, challenges are hard to overcome. Um, but as Max Sula says, you will find your way. I think that's a great message for us all uh, to take forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for having me here today. Um, I'm Kamrun, I'm from Bangladesh. Um, I am a researcher by profession based in Bangladesh and I'm now doing a PhD uh, with Lepra and University of Essex with the uh, people with neglected tropical disease. And my uh, area of research would be exploring uh, the mental health care seeking behavior and the perception of the human rights uh, for the people who have leprosy and lymphatic filariasis, some of the major neglected tropical diseases back in uh, Bangladesh. So um, this is a very new area for me in terms of uh, leprosy and lymphatic filariasis. I just started last October. So within these five months, I have learned that uh, these are the people who are uh, very marginalized, belong from a very poor community. And since they live in a very uh, close uh, uh, space, um, and due to having lymphatic filariasis or leprosy, they have to go through different kind of discrimination based on uh, the preset stigma and gender notions. And especially uh, the women, uh, as we have seen throughout the whole presentations today, they have the double burden of the diseases. Not only they have the microbiological conditions, but also they have um, the other uh, uh, like comorbid conditions such as mental health. Um, since I, my expert is in mental health research, so I would put more emphasis into that because um, men and women both suffer from leprosy, but women suffer a bit more because um, they are expected to do their household chores even if they have the hidden um, pain, they have the hidden disability, um, and how much resilient they are that even after they are suffering for a long time, but they would still expect it to do the, uh, their household chores, you know, maintaining their kettles, also their children. 
And one of the other uh, problems that this uh, woman faces is that uh, even if they have these kind of problems, they don't go and seek care until this is a very complicated uh, you know, situation because it's not very really easy for them to access health care um, and show their private part to someone who is a male you know, sitting in that uh, you know, uh, hospital. It's not easy for them. Um, and number three is when they even uh, come back home uh, because they live in a close community, not only they have to go um, uh, 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 to, um, uh, through different kind of abuses from their husband, but also from their extended family and, and the social um, community. They have to be isolated. They don't even go to the <coughs> social events. So all of this put together a, a great mental health burden and you know um, the, their quality of life is compromised. And since uh, the women are the center of the family, so the whole family uh, um, is affected. As we have heard from these two powerful women with lived experiences, they both have um, put emphasis how their family life was affected. So um, as uh, I would put emphasis on how, uh, uh, what Momita and Maria spoken about, um, about co-designing uh, the programs, including um, the gender and ensure their uh, equitable voices. So I, I would also um, ensure that um, not only uh, involving them uh, into the uh, program would, uh, uh, you know, uh, would help, but also we need to do some anti-stigma campaign. We have to involve the family and also the community leaders. So because uh, not, uh, they have to, the women have to go through different kind of stigmatization and different level, not individual family and the societal level. So we have to do a like prominent st uh, stigma, anti-stigma campaign, and also. Um, to uh, do like well-being um, and rehabilitation program for them because even if they're microbiologically cured, but their well-being is still compromised after even their, uh, you know, they don't have the leprosy um, uh, microbiologically. So we have to, you know, keep talking about that. We have to have this kind of programs, not only in UK, but also back in Bangladesh and India, so that, you know, uh, and, and to the affected areas, the endemic prone areas, so that, you know, the, the community knows that these are the normal problem and this will be cured. And, you know, it's absolutely normal to talk to these women and, and support them. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, so I am Sampa Bussain, I am one of the trustees of the Lepra Board. Uh, so let me tell you, I joined the Lepra Board around six years back. And uh, before I joined, when I was uh, told about this position, I said, why are you talking about leprosy? That has been eradicated long back. And that was my surprise that, you know, I'm supposed to be quite well educated, I know the world, I've traveled around, and here I am not even knowing that this disease is still around. And for me, that was a big thing. One of the questions that I was asked when I joined uh, the board at my interview was, uh, why do you want to join LEPRA? And I said, well, it, because it ticks two boxes, one in my head, one in my heart. And the head one was because I was coming in as the chair of risk and finance, and I'm a finance person by background, so love numbers, and it makes more sense. Very, very sad life, but uh, anyway. Uh, and the second one was, it takes my heart, because I suddenly remembered that when I was a child, my mother used to volunteer in a leprosy colony in, back in Bihar, because I come from Bihar. And, and for, so for me, it was absolutely no-brainer joining LEPRA. So coming back to today's topic, which is about resilience, I will talk about two of the ladies whom I met. I've met a number of ladies uh, when I have gone to various programs in India, but two of them really stand out. So one was a very young girl. She was around early 20s, and I met her in one of our uh, hospitals, leprosy hospital near the Nepal border. And they were telling me her story, that uh, she was diagnosed with leprosy when she was around 16 years old. It was a shock to the family. The parents were absolutely you know, petrified. What's going to happen? This girl is never going to get married. Everyone will know that she has leprosy. So you know, the life is finished. So I spoke to this girl, and I said, how did you feel when you, know, when you were told that, you know, you have been diagnosed with leprosy. So she said that, you know, the doctor had told us that I will be cured. So I was not really worried about that. And what, what a strong girl, right? So, and then I said, and what about, you know, the fact that your parents were so worried that you're not going to get married? Because think about it. It's rural India, 
uh, a girl gets you know born gets born and then she grows up hardly has a little bit of education and then she is married off that's a life right and i said how did you feel and she said i was very happy and i said why she said if i don't get married i'll get to study <laughs> And I said, my God, look at this girl. I mean, what an amazing woman. And that is what she did. She actually studied, Lepra helped her, and she is now one of our medical assistants. And I have seen her in, in, a, in a, a sort of, a, you know, uh, in our hospital uh, uh, laboratory, working with clients, working with patients, working with doctors, an absolutely fantastic woman. And the second one, I'll go back to what Momita and Maria showed about that Bogra Foundation and the girl in the red hijab, okay? So I go to Bogra Foundation and then this is again very hardcore rural Bangladesh um, and I see a lot of men in that foundation but suddenly I'm surprised to see a lot of women also. And then they say, okay, we will uh, make a presentation to you. And, uh, and then they were thrilled that I understood Bengali. So they said, okay, we don't have to translate. You can understand what we are saying, great. And uh, I thought, okay, one of the older men will stand up and give the presentation. And there was this lady in the red hijab in that picture, stood up, gave a flawless presentation. And I also happened to be a leadership coach. And I left, I, when the presentation was finished, I went to her and I said, you can stand up in any corporate boardroom because you are so confident and you are so amazing. She put her words absolutely clearly and then she told me her story. And she said, five years back, I never stepped out of the house, okay? If I had to step out of the house, it was only for family functions. And I used to always be accompanied by either my father or brother or husband or, or parents, some, someone or the other. And then she was diagnosed with leprosy. And then, you know, the lepra, uh, the field workers, they started talking to her. And she got very interested, and good to, to, to your point, she got very interested about understanding that there are rights attached to this, you know, that uh, you have this disease or you are incapacitated, so you can have some rights. And she got to understand more and more. And now she goes to the local bureaucrats with her two friends and demands stuff. The girl who never stepped out of her house is resilient enough to understand her rights and goes up now on her own to demand her rights. I mean, for me, it was like, wow. So I feel, you know, I'm very proud to be a woman, of course. And I feel I am a quite a strong woman. But when I s meet people like these, I get a lot of strength from them. So for me, that is my journey. And it's an amazing journey. Thank you. I'll, I'll be very brief. <laughs> um, first of all, I've, I've reintroduced myself. I'm Judith Brown de Mesquita. I'm co-deputy director of the Human Rights Center. Um, and I've worked in the Human Rights Center in the law school for about 20 years here. Um, focusing on global health and human rights. Um, but before that, um, you know, at the beginning of the evening, Jimmy and I were talking, and, and Jimmy was talking about how, you know, there's so many, when you talk about leprosy, there's often this sort of perception of all these negative stories and experiences. And I think, um, you know, all the presentations today and the, the anecdotes and the personal stories and the experiences of lepra staff just highlight the inclusion and the empowerment in a way that, um, you know, through difficult circumstances which weren't pl planned, <laughs> has somehow, has somehow um, occurred, um, you know, through, through adversity. Um, so we've heard from Diana's experience in terms of the sort of um, public health and the sort of pharmacological side of it, if that's the right <laughs> word. Um, so what about what about human rights? Um, well, over the last sort of twenty to thirty years, human rights and law have become much more integrated into global health practice, and law is a um, is a um, you know important determinant of health. Um, and throughout the world, um, equality and non-discrimination has been embedded in national laws. Doesn't mean it's always respected, but at least it, it's there um, as, as a norm um, which should guide policy making, it should guide um, local institutions, um, and it should, in, should, in, should guide um, community 
um, initiatives. Um, and, I, and I think in this context, we've really seen um, at all levels, in terms of the national policy, in terms of the institutions, provision of care with um, the, th through LAPRA and through other institutions and through the community, um, and, and through the, the pop affected populations, how equality and non-discrimination has been advanced. Um, and the important, of course, importance, of course, of equality and non-discrimination in the workplace and the important role um, and value of having um, women in the workforce to advance this gender equality. Um, and I think two other things that I want to just to reflect on, two other sort of key features of human rights um, and, and what they bring to public health, um, one of which um, is, is participation. Um, and that's not to say that you, you only have participation when you've got a human rights-based approach, approach as well, ingrained in public health practice very often, but not, but, but not always, um, and to recognise that it is a right um, and that people, as you were just talking about, have the right to go and demand, demand things. Um, you know, I think that's a very important contribution. And the other one um, is accountability. So because duty bearers do have these responsibilities, it's important to be able to hold them to account for, for, for what they're meant to do and provide. Uh, I think I'll stop there. Um, thank you. We have a few minutes, so um, and I don't know whether we've had any questions online, but I'll first see if there are questions in the audience. Any questions or comments? Yes, please. Sorry, can you speak what up? What are signs and symptoms? Okay. And what's the incubation period? Diana, I know you're not on the panel, but the question really is a medical question. Do you want to answer that? Do you need a microphone? Okay. I think you need one for the room itself. Did you hear the question? Yes, I did. Okay. Was, the, was about the, the signs and symptoms of, of, of leprosy. And the incubation period. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, uh, the signs and sim the symptoms of leprosy are very variable. So people present with a whole range of skin lesions, ranging from a small uh, pale patch through to nodules and infiltration. And they can also present with uh, involvement of their peripheral nerves. So they, they can have... Uh, um, uh, uh, loss of sensation in their hands and feet uh, and weakness in their, in their hands and feet. And uh, it's these, uh, the involvement of the nerves that means that uh, you're at damage of getting, that you're at risk of getting damage to, to your hands and feet with leprosy. In, and that's one of the, the classical aspects of it. And the incubation period is very variable. So the incubation period uh, var varies from a few months to 20 years. Yes, please. Uh, I just have <coughs> question for Diana. Would you want another question to Diana? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Diana, don't go away. What is your question? Yeah, um, I would like to know if there are any specific um, <coughs> conditions that make women more vulnerable to the disease itself or to contract the bacteria itself, rather than just, of course, what we've spoken about, the, the social determinants of, of, the, of the disease, but if there are any medical aspects that make women more vulnerable to it. Uh, the, I can give you a, a two-part answer to that. The, the, the first is the good news that actually um, more, more women don't get leprosy. So actually, the, the slightly so there are equal numbers of males and females uh, getting leprosy until puberty. After puberty, there's a slight in, uh, excess of males getting leprosy. Um, we don't know whether that's also due to uh, uh, more better case finding for males, but um, certainly the um, uh, uh, women are, are, are not more at risk of getting leprosy. The bad news is, is that uh, women after pregnancy are at risk of getting these, these reactions and the, the inflammation in their nerves. And so this is a very well-recognised part of the, the, of the leprosy to the problems. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's, yeah, 
that's your, your answer. Other questions? Yes, can I take the woman uh, with the glasses and the black sweater, I think? Uh, so we've talked a lot about the issues that impact specifically on women, but I just wondered, that there's so much to take in there. What do you think would be the one thing that would make a real difference if we were able to achieve it? Anybody have the answer to that question? What's the one thing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> me all the answers is rights. Um, Maria Morita also, I think they developed their number one solution, realize rights. You know, my grandmother's generation was the first wave of feminism, demanding the right to vote and property inheritance and ownership. My mother's generation was the second wave of feminism in the 60s and 70s, fighting for equality in society. My generation has pushed that on uh, in many ways, in so many great ways. But there's still so much to do, and my daughter's generation is going to have to continue the realization of equal rights in society for, for all for all genders. And it's, it's a sad but true situation. The challenges that you've heard about this fight for women affected by leprosy, like Matt Suit and the video and others we've heard about, they are compounded by the general uh, um, position and rights or lack of rights that they're able to enjoy experience and inclusion in their societies, whether it's because of the patriarchal system or the economic disenfranchisement or the lack of access to education. So many reasons compound the the extra challenge, the dual challenge, the extra burden challenge of equality diagnosis. So the sooner we realise equal rights, the more impact we'll have uh, for women and violence. And I think the lady next to you also had a question. Yes, go ahead. Since the theme was resilience. I'm uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Well, can you give a microphone? Sounds like a good way to make a Sorry, I'm a bad bad on this. Um, since the theme is resilience, and it, leprosy is a bacterial infection that's treated with three antibiotics. Since antibiotic resistance is becoming a huge thing, and since in 20, 30 years we expect most of the antibiotics listed there to not work anymore, do you think leprosy is going to be a bigger issue going forward for everyone? Diana, do you want to talk about the possible new drug treatment that we're looking at supporting in that? Do you want to? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, you're you're, uh, you're very prescient uh, uh, to worry about uh, about resistance at, uh, in leprosy. Um, we've been very lucky uh, because we've actually seen very little uh, resistance to rifampicin, which is uh, highly bactericidal for for Mycobacterium leprae. Um, there's a lot of uh, resistance uh, to dapsone. Uh, and WHO uh, were very the, the prescient in saying that all leprosy patients should be treated with a com combination of either two or three drugs in 1982. And we've now had 40 years of combination treatment and we've actually got very little resistance, which we're very lucky about. But we do need new antibiotics for, for leprosy and, and one of the things that we uh, should be doing is testing uh, new regimens, and uh, we could have other regimens with, with fewer adverse effects. Thank you, I just want to check if there are any questions that have come in online. No. Um, is there another question? Please, we'll make this the last question, and I know there will be time for people to just walk around and talk to individuals. So please, go ahead. I just wanted to thank you for such an inspiring event after we could use support from the programme we've had about today. Well, um, I... I could start off by saying supporting Lepra, which is in Colchester, uh, would be the first thing. You've got the information there. You can always contact us, and we're always happy to have people support us. So don't be shy coming forward. Jimmy, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think obviously you can visit our website, and there's lots of information there. If you want to get involved in any way, in any way you feel 
comfortable to you, but I would definitely advise to come to either Maria or Rita who said anyone wants to talk to us, come and talk to us. And I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you to, and to, to explore how you want to get involved. I think now I'm going to bring this to an end. Um, I just want to thank a few more people. One of them is Holly Ward, um, who basically, uh, from the University of um, Essex Events, who has worked closely with us and been our link to make this event happen. So over to you for a big round of applause. <laughs> and I want to thank the university technical team for live streaming and recording. Um, all our speakers, the people who, uh, Nova and Indrani, who filmed and translated the videos, and Chris Lang um, of Lepra UK for the editing. Um, and basically, thanking all of you here for giving up your evening. I hope that you found it inspiring. Uh, the women you have heard about have been extraordinary, and their stories show that even in the darkest times, sometimes that's when you have the brightest spark. Mm -hmm. So I'm delighted that you've been able to come with us and let us share with you our experience of working with these women through Leper UK and our sister organizations. So thank you very much. feel as inspired and blown away as I did. I certainly came here not knowing a lot about leprosy and one of the first things I'm going to do is uh, take the invitation about visiting your, your website and, and, and finding out more. So thank you Lepra for this wonderful idea of hosting a joint event for our significant anniversaries. We have really enjoyed working with you on this event and here's to many more um, events as part of our partnership. Um, I want to thank our speakers, each and every one of you, our panelists for your time and contributions to the event, those incredibly inspiring women we heard via the video. Thank you to all who attended, um, those of you in person, those of you online, and goodbye um, from us um, to everyone across the world. Um, I'd like to invite you all to share with us some refreshments, some drinks, and really have the opportunity to network as well. Before we um, have a, <coughs> a clap for everyone, I do want to um, reiterate um, Suzanne's thanks to Holly. Holly and her team are absolutely quite stupendous in how they manage all of us and make these things, these magical things happen. So Holly, all the San people, all her team, many thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.